Kane, boy, that was a quick turnaround from you already back from Iowa. Yeah, there's uh, virtually everybody leaves in the morning. I got to the airport this morning, and about half the news people that you've ever seen uh, in uh, on uh, network news were sleeping yet in the uh, lobby of the airport. Wow. And, uh, they all got on airplanes and headed for New Hampshire. Uh, a big extravaganza there and uh, sort of a surprise at the uh, end of the night. Too. i got to ask you that. Wow, because what a night it was. Romney wins by just eight votes. Your reaction watching all of this? Well, the, 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 probably the biggest thing was it was fairly obvious that a lot of people were, were having trouble making up their mind. And I, I don't think it was because they didn't like the candidates. It was that they were having trouble deciding which one was the best among them and which one would likely be able to win the general election. Mm -hmm. And you had a, a, a pretty organized following for Ron Paul and a pretty organized uh, following for Mitt Romney, but the rest... Uh, were scattered among the rest of those candidates, and only in the last few days did they start homing in on somebody. And they homed in uh, you know, mostly on Santorum uh, with some scattering of votes for uh, for Gingrich and uh, and Perry. So, yeah. uh, but the, you could feel the decisions being made if you were there uh, in, very very late. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know where it, uh, it goes from here because there's a, an awful lot of organizing and things that they'll be doing uh, up in New Hampshire and in South Carolina. Uh, but uh, it was uh, quite an extravaganza there. They had a hard time getting the vote in. At, uh, unfortunately, some of it came in kind of late at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning or 12.45. I know because you said you expected it would be in much sooner. But when you look at former Senator Rick Santorum, talk about having a night who came from nowhere a few weeks ago, now heading up to New Hampshire himself. We've got two debates now coming up before the next primary in New Hampshire, and that should be very interesting, very telling, don't you think? Yeah, I, I suspect that the whole thing is going to be become an even bigger fight than it's been, and uh, I suppose there are two ways of looking at that. One is that the candidates may all injure themselves and go into the general election wounded, uh, my personal theory has been in campaigns that I've been involved in, though, is that at least at the state level, primaries are a good thing because the strongest uh, person emerges, and when you come out of it, you've got a proven organization. If you've won, you know where, uh, where the strengths are, you know where your fundraising uh, works and where it doesn't work. You know people on your staff, your key people that have performed well and those that uh, have not performed well. And so you go into the big fight of a general election with an organization that is ready to be uh, in prime time. Now, obviously, you can go so far with that that you uh, you yeah. go into the general election with everybody wounded and, uh, and half dead, then it doesn't uh, work so good. No, and when you look at, you know, Michelle Bachman, we're always seeing the uh, pack narrowing. She's uh, calling it quits. Who do you think benefits from that, from her votes? Well, I, I think it's probably fair to say for a while that everybody, you, know, you, you have the Paul organization and the Romney organization, and then the others that are left standing are trying to organize the, the, the third wave. And so they will, each of the remainder will benefit each other as they drop out. Mm -hmm. Eventually, a, a winner is going to come about in, in this thing, and hopefully then uh, people from, whether it, if it's Romney, they'll gravitate to Romney, or if it's Santorum or uh, Paul or whoever it is, that the supporters of the rest will be unified in gravitating to that winner. That has usually happened, uh, but I, I'm, I'm a little worried about it happening this yeah, time. Yeah, you sound not like happen, you are. Uh, as much as... Uh, one would have expected the last time. Yeah, and you're looking at Senator McCain. He's already up there in New Hampshire today, and he's endorsing Mitt Romney. That's got to be important for him. But you got New Gingrich, and he's saying, hey, you know, he's looking at forming an alliance with uh, Rick Santorum to take on Romney. And as you're saying, that's not what the Republicans need to do. Well, I mean, that, I suppose it depends on how you look at it. There's going to be a winner. At the end, there's going to be a winner, and that will be the person that put together the best alliance and was best able to communicate to, uh, to the base uh, and the people that vote in the primaries and the caucuses as to uh, uh, who they like and who's the one that's likely to, uh, to win the general election. So uh, I don't know that it's going to be very helpful 
for people that have been officials in the past to make endorsements and things. It, my, my feeling is that right now, obviously they're going to do that and they're free to do what they want, mm -hmm. but, but the, the voters in the primaries and the caucuses are so intently interested in this that I think Governor Branstead said it pretty well last night. The reason he didn't make an endorsement is that he felt uh, that it would be taken as, as him kind of trying to, to push people into a direction uh, uh, that that was his, but that they might not have wanted to go in. And he didn't reveal that he was for anybody or not, but he was just saying because the interest is so intense, people are making up their own mind and they're not particularly interested in what a governor or senator or a previous candidate has to say. And I think maybe he was right. I'm not criticizing uh, McCain or anybody mm -hmm. else for making their endorsements. That's uh, their affair. Uh, but, but, boy, the interest is very intense this time, and probably endorsements will be less influential than uh, uh, than they might have been in the past. Well, as you were saying, you saw that very clearly, uh, you know, in Iowa, and that's good. I mean, there, the turnout, 122,000 voters, they were looking at maybe at 140,000, still a record, though. But you were saying you could really tell this was serious business for these people that were showing up. It was very serious, and, and uh, I suppose another test of it is that uh, Governor Branstead and uh, Senator Grassley, uh, Congressman King, Congressman Latham, none of them made any endorsements, mm -hmm. and, and uh, they've expressed that that was their feeling, that the, the, the people that were going to the caucuses were so intently interested uh, that uh, uh, they were perfectly willing and, and anxious for that process to carry on without people getting their advice into it. Yeah. You know, they were talking a lot about in the media last night about who's the most conservative versus, you know, who's the best chance at beating Obama. That's where the sort of the, the people were going on this. Um, the bottom line for you, what do you think it is? We got to get somebody new in the White House? Well, <laughs> I suppose that's a, uh, I had an old friend in the Iowa legislature used to tell me only winners legislate. <laughs> And at the end of the day, you've also you've got to win in order to be in office, and uh, that's obviously pretty important. But then, if you win with somebody that disagrees with the fundamental positions that you take, uh, then it's sort of a pyrrhic victory. So, uh, the truth is that both of those concepts are true, but I don't think they're applicable in this instance because most all these candidates, their general philosophy and the direction that they're going in is probably going to be acceptable to most. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Republicans, I would think, uh, and an awful lot of independents. So then the question is going to start to devolve on who can win the election, I suspect. Is there, although there are differences, those differences went, uh, come about mainly if you take a snapshot in time and then assume that that's the only thing you're going to talk about is what somebody did in a short time in office as, uh, as governor or as speaker or uh, in some other position that they were in. And the truth is that a person's political life is, is a lot wider than that, and uh, there are a lot of unique circumstances. You know, when you're Speaker of the House, for example, you're responsible for, uh, for your own philosophy and your own uh, uh, status as a representative, but you're also responsible for running the House and for uh, providing legislation that protects the country and all those things. And then at the end of the day, there are things that are inserted in bills that you don't have control over, but you don't have the ability to say, well, we're not going to fund the Defense Department or, uh, or build a highway or whatever it is. So uh, it, it becomes a little bit more complicated than what people would like to paint it, and that's yeah. true if you're a governor. You've got a state to run. You've got disasters that happen. Uh, you have uh, uh, things that uh, people depend on. And when you're handed a package, it's often not an ideal package, but sometimes you have to proceed to still run the state. Well, like Rick Santorin said, the game is on, and it sure is on now. It's going to be a, a, a quite a fight. I think it's going to be uh, very interesting to watch. I hope it is not very harmful to watch.